so you've gone red again there the computer's actually like the mouse is gone you don't want to see this this is bad in my last M2 Mac Mini video, I showed you how capable this machine really is by showing you some practical examples of how I'll be using this machine. I was able to run Windows, play high-end cloud games, and do some graphic design work as well. That video is proving very popular, thank you. And I got loads of questions from you, which I will address in this video as well. For example, how good is the base model M2 Mac Mini for graphic designers? Should I upgrade at least the 16 gig RAM instead? Can I run Windows 11 VMs on it? Will it handle it? Should I just go for the Mac Studio instead? And there were many other questions as well, which I'll cover throughout this video in my usual style of show, don't tell. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. The short answer to most of those questions is, this machine is excellent for all of those use cases, but there are some important points to consider. Right, let's address the elephant in the room first. In my last video, I was making the case for the base model because of the price, of course, and the performance that it delivers. I'm not defending Apple, by far I'm not doing that. I do think they cut corners here, and I do also believe that they are becoming more and more like all the other manufacturers, stuffing these devices with subpar components, like the slower 256 gig SSD here, in comparison with the previous M1 Mac Mini, which the same size SSD was a bit faster than the current one. But I have to be objective and look after those of you who, like myself, are looking at this machine, giving it slower cost and what it's able to do. If I'm thinking just with my tech lover head and my geek brain, I would say get the M2 Pro and max it out, right? With all the cores that you can afford. Whilst there is definitely a good use case for that, it would be crazy for me to recommend that for quite a few cases, but rather than theorizing about that, I thought I'd just show you what you can do with 8 gig of RAM and that smaller SSD. Come with me, I'll show you. It's not as easy as it sounds. Right. Uh, let's go with it here. Okay, let's open the activity monitor here so you can see in real time what the memory is doing. With only a few tabs in Chrome and a handful of apps like Microsoft's Office, we're hitting around five, five and a half gig of RAM usage. If we're honest with ourselves, or we know that this is probably where the majority of users who buy a Mac mini would be most of the time. Now, if I want to do some graphic design, which is a bit more advanced, let's open Lightroom and Photoshop and a few documents within that. Let's open now 15 tabs in Chrome here to get really busy. All of these websites in Chrome are very different, by the way. So unlike some of these tests that you see online, you know, doing the same thing just 20 times, 30 times, this is actually a wide variety of news, content like Netflix, YouTube, social media, and online shopping as well. Okay, adding Lightroom into the mix here, hovering around 6.8 gig of RAM. If you've noticed adding Microsoft Office and online meetings earlier, it didn't really add too much in terms of memory consumption. You only added a negligible amount. Now with Photoshop, Lightroom and Illustrator, well, not many documents either, right? Less than 10 in each. We can see how much of the memory now is being used. Still no stutters though, you know, no beach balls or anything like that. Actually, shout out to the Apple Silicon here though. Check out the processor ticking along like there's nothing going on. I know we can hammer this machine with 3D modeling and loads of layers of 4K or even 8K editing just to see it crash. Maybe I'll do that, but that's probably not gonna be much use to you. As a geek, I love that sort of thing, you know, opening this thing up and seeing what's inside would be amazing. But in this video, I'd rather show you some practical stuff. This is what I think is more useful to you. And okay, we are seeing some memory swapping going on here, but don't be alarmed just yet. Why? Well. I would say that this is pretty much the limit of a, what a typical Mac mini buyer would do. In the last few days, I haven't really tried to push it beyond this because I don't even do this on my M1 Max MacBook Pro, right? And here's where things get interesting. The 4K footage I'm gonna be using is 10-bit 422 filmed in S-Log on the Sony A7S III. And the B-roll is a mix of drone footage also recorded in 4K and some more of the Sony 4K footage. By the way, I turned off background rendering, which makes any machine to slow down anyway. Right now, if I don't close Chrome or Adobe, it becomes impossible to work. I'm surprised I even tried this because it's really stupid. See this bit in red here? That's basically when the computer's going, nah, I can't, I can't deal with this. You know, you definitely don't want to see this when you're working. Multiple layers of 4K video editing, as well as having all those tabs open in Chrome and the Adobe apps, it's just not advisable at all, right? <laughs> Again, as a geek, I enjoy breaking things, but in practical terms, that is not what I would do. So you've gone red again there, and that's just four layers of 4K, not a lot going on. So the computer's actually, like the mouse is gone. You don't wanna see this, this is bad, right? So if I remove some of the layers here, even removing layers did not help either. As you can see, the machine is really, really struggling. It's not just the video, the audio is all choppy as well, very distracting, like I said, impossible to work. Now, when we remove some of the Chrome tabs, you know, you can see here, the memory's already gone back down to six gig. It's, it's, it's doing much better. Let's close Adobe as well, because that's not how I work. I 
don't typically let, I mean, sometimes I leave it open by accident because the M1 Max can cope with the stuff I've got. I think 32, maybe even 64 gig of RAM on that machine is crazy. All right, around 5.8 gig now of RAM being used, just three tabs in Chrome. I'll leave Microsoft Office open, but not doing much anyway. This becomes way more useful now, and dare I say, just as quick as my M1 Max MacBook Pro here. And you can see here, it's all green when I'm working on, on this without Chrome being open or any other app. So multitasking is a bit dangerous when you're dealing with something such heavy kind of high-end stuff with 4K footage. Uh, you know, doing color grading and things like that, multiple layers of 4K. By the way, I'll be doing a video about this setup soon and I left some links down below for you as well. So everything that you see here, all this lovely stuff will be there for you. Moving files around for the sake of testing as well, that is pretty acceptable for a base model machine. It took about five minutes to transfer 66 gigs. If I could work out what the difference between a timer and a stopwatch was. As you'll be able to see in my previous video as well, I have a Windows 11 virtual machine here and I was also able to run some basic coding and gaming as well. Not just any gaming, but proper like online gaming. Right, but should you get the base model M2 Mac Mini? I guess that's the question that a lot of you are asking, right? Just before I get into that, this YouTube thing is extremely hard. I'm not just saying this. I'm not a full-time creator. I'm doing this, you know, on the side almost. And especially for a new channel like this one, you know, it really helps. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up will go a long way and I really appreciate it. After this video, I encourage you to check around, you know, have a look at my other videos. And if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. We're building a really good community here. And I, and I can't thank you enough for, for what we've already been able to, to achieve. What do you get with a subscription? Well, I'm here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. Right, should you get the base model? The 8 gig RAM spec has been a great choice for my workflow here, knowing where the limits are and knowing that I've got my main machine here. Is that gonna replace my M1 Max MacBook Pro? No, I wouldn't even dream of it, but it has been able to cope with a lot more than I expected. Sure, 16 gig RAM would be much better if I wanted to do more like multitasking as well as crazy things like video editing, but I do appreciate that you may not care about video editing and the machine can actually do it, provided you're not expecting to run 15, 20 tabs in Chrome at the same time. So if you're planning on using the M2 Mac Mini to multitasking and do creative work, then I'd say the 16 gig RAM is a minimum upgrade that you should consider. If you're not multitasking to that same level that I showed here, or maybe you're doing a little bit less than that, then the 8 gig will be all right. If you looked at this and you're thinking, hmm, I do a lot more than this for my work. And you're thinking to yourself, maybe just get the M2 Pro Mac Mini. Well, this is where I would encourage you to look at the Mac Studio option as well, because you know if you can afford the weight, the M2 Mac Studio, whenever that comes out, might be a better option for you. Why do I say that? Well, mainly because of the price, right? Assuming that you can wait. When you start getting closer to $2,000, I do question whether the Mac Mini is even the right purchase. The M2 Pro in a base model configuration, maybe with one upgrade, might be okay still, but when you get close to that 18, 1900, maybe, maybe you're looking for another machine. What about storage? Well, with storage, there are workarounds. I would always recommend upgrading if you can, if you can afford it, but don't make it so ridiculous because, you know, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, there are plenty of much more cost-effective options out there, including some even faster options out there as well, which you can see in this video over here. I hope to see you there. Baby,